Hey, pen people. So today what I want to do, because I recently hit a thousand subscribers, I want to celebrate by doing a Q&A video and a giveaway. So over the past few months or so, I've done a couple of posts in my um, community page area asking about a Q&A, and it sounded like most of you, like two thirds of you were interested um, in a Q&A. So for the other third of you, I apologize. Um, I don't plan to do this all the time, so don't worry. But I thought this would be fun, um, especially since uh, I've recently hit that milestone. It'll just be fun to change it up and do something new. And you guys have asked me some really cool questions, so I'm excited to get to that. And for the giveaway, pretty simple. Um, sorry, I don't have like any flashy, fancy pen or anything to give away, but I do have a one-of-a-kind pen bed that I have made out of reclaimed wood, and it is finished with a natural oil beeswax um, solution. It's very smooth and just sits on your desk and you can stick a pen in it. And um, yeah, it's kind of fun. So if that interests you, um, that'll be uh, the giveaway that I'm doing. And uh, check out my Instagram page for details. All right, so let's hop into these questions. <coughs> there are two questions that were asked that were pretty similar. So I'm gonna hit those at the same time. What's your dream fountain pen? Also, if you could create your perfect fountain pen, what would it be? So that, those are really good questions. I guess the dream fountain pen might be a little bit different because that is probably asking me about pens that currently exist rather than uh, creating my perfect pen. So my dream pen, I don't really know. I, I've gone through different iterations of what that is and uh, I don't know. Like uh, for a while, I, I was really into, I was really interested in the, the Gravitas uh, pens. Um, ben Walsh makes some really cool stuff. And looking at his pens, I was like, I think this is going to be the perfect pen for me. I really do. It's a cool pen, but for me, it's, it hasn't like just the way I hold a pen and all that kind of stuff. It hasn't been super duper ideal. And so I guess my idea of, of the dream pen keeps changing. Right now I have my eyes on a Lamy 2000. I think that's going to be fun. If I could create my perfect pen, um, I've thought about this so much for years, actually, because I'm mostly an entry-level pen person. I do like those fancy pens, but mostly, you know, for me, it's Twisby Ecos, Lamy Safaris, Pilot Metropolitans, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of my bread and butter. That's mostly what I have in my collection. And I think that you don't have to spend a lot of money to enjoy fountain pens. But in those main core entry-level pens that get recommended a lot, you know, the Metropolitan, Safari, Eco, they're all great pens, but there are things I don't like about each of them. If I could create my perfect pen, it would probably be to, to swap parts between all three of those pens to create like the, perf the perfect conglomerate of all those pens. So it would probably be a Twisby Eco body, but that has the ruggedness and durability of a Lamy Safari the nib of a Pilot Metropolitan, but it would be a replaceable nib like the Lamy Safari. Because <laughs> one thing that I hate about fountain pens, uh, I mean, I, I mostly love fountain pens, that's why I do this channel, but one thing that I don't like is just, if you drop it, nib down, you're done, you know? <laughs> Unless you get lucky and it's an easy fix, which does happen sometimes, um, or you spend money to send it to a Nibmeister or something, but uh, if you've got this like Lamy Safari that you really like using or this Twisby Eco or whatever, it's, it's not gonna really be worth sending that to a Nibmeister probably because that's probably gonna cost more than the pen itself. Um, but with the Lamy Safari, you can replace the nib pretty easily. It's not super cheap, but it's cheaper than buying a whole new pen. So I, I like that. So that's kind of my thought process behind that question. Take all the best things about um, those entry level pens that are out there and just take the best parts of them and just put them into one pen. That would be my, my dream pen. Um, and that's not to say that I don't like Twisby nibs or Lamy nibs or um, all that kind of stuff. I do, um, but I'm just talking about, you know, my preference um, on, on these things. Okay, what's your favorite poem? That's a good question. Not quite pen related, but it's related to my channel definitely because I am a poet. And as you've noticed, I tend to share quotes that I like, um, whether that be something from a poem or a, a book I'm reading or even scripture or whatever. So it's a perfectly relevant question, even though it's not pen related. And it's a tough question too. I read a lot of poems and they're all different. I'm reading a, a book of haiku from 18th and 19th century right now. Um, 
and it's great. I love it, you know, but it's completely different from everything else that I've read um, up to this point. So uh, it's a tough question, but one poem that has stuck with me for years and years and years, and I've had it memorized for years and years and years, is Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. That is an amazing poem. It's a villanelle, which is a formal structure for that poem. Um, and it's a very rigorous structure. I've, I've never attempted anything close to it. There's a lot of rhyme and rhythm and different things. And typically, I'm not super a big fan of rhyming, rhyming poems. Most poems written today don't rhyme. Um, and I tend to fall into that camp. But this poem is just enchanting. Robert Frost does a really good job of using the rhythm and using the rhyme. And it's not sing-songy or... It doesn't sound like a Hallmark card. It actually sounds very enchanting. And it, it really feels like you're in that snowy wood with him. Um, I live in Utah. I live in a snowy place. It snowed last night. Um, it's very snowy right now. And going out at night when it's snowing, oh my gosh, there's nothing like it. It's like this silence that isn't silent. It's like a silence that you feel. And if you listen really carefully, you can hear the snow falling and that snow muffles the traffic and the neighbors and everything else. Um, it's really, really cool. So that's a poem that has stuck with me simply because of the atmosphere it creates. I just really like it. But there's all kinds of good stuff out there. I love Mary Oliver. She's one of my favorites. She's awesome. Um, that's the only name that's coming to mind right now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, next question. So what got you into fountain pens? Do you want the short version or the long version? I will try to keep it somewhat brief. So I have always, as far back as I can remember, I have always liked paper and pens. Um, I just haven't always been a, a snob about it <laughs> like I am now. Fountain pens tends to turn you into kind of a snob a little bit. But I remember being like 12 and 13 and um, getting, what was it, like an Atlantis? I don't know if that was like a Bic pen or Papermate or something, but it was like a cheap, disposable, retractable pen. And I loved it. I thought that was the coolest pen ever. And so I've just always noticed pens, even though I haven't always had the the guidance to find good ones, you know? I did briefly try fountain pens in high school. I remembered that my sister had gotten, for Christmas or her birthday, she'd gotten a, a fountain pen calligraphy set, just a cheap, simple set. And she did some cool calligraphy with it. And I was like, wow, I wanna try that. So I, I bought some fountain pens thinking, okay, I'm gonna do some calligraphy. This is gonna be awesome. And uh, I opened up the box, I, I uncapped the pens. I think they, yeah. Did I mention they were Pilot Varsities? I'm pretty sure they were Pilot, Pilot Varsities. And so I opened up these pens and I was like, hey, these don't have that little like chisel nib. They have like a, this weird ball on the end. What the heck is it going on with this ball? Like, why is this there? Um, Cause I just had no clue, no clue. So I did not do calligraphy with my Pilot Varsities cause that's not really what you do with Pilot Varsities. But I did enjoy those pens. Um, I did write with them and I enjoyed them. And then they ran out of ink and I threw them away. So fast forward to 2015, I was a senior in college and I decided, you know what? I want to try writing in cursive again. I want to try improving my handwriting. And I'm going to like look around for some nice pens to do that. And so the first thing I found was felt tip pens. I just went to the university book, bookstore and they, they had some fun stuff that you don't normally see at like Walmart, which was my other main stationery store. <laughs> yeah, I, I found some felt tip pens. One of them I still have. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. So this, it's a Pilot Razor Point. And it's a fun little pen. Like, as far as disposable pens go, like this is a cool design, really sleek and awesome looking. But yeah, just a simple felt tip pen. And I loved it. I loved using this thing. It still has a little bit of ink in it. It's a little bit dry and scratchy now. I don't use it. Um, I actually just pulled it out of storage after like years and years, um, just in time for this video. I did the felt tip pen thing for a, a minute but then I was like, remember those fountain pens I used in high school? I should try that again, that would be fun. So I just hopped on YouTube and boom, I found all of Brian Goulet's videos and SBRE Brown and Fig Boot on Pens and just was like a wash in this whole new world. <laughs> and um, it was 
intimidating and exciting and I eventually got a Pilot Metropolitan, um, which I actually have inked up. It's on my notebook right here. This is my first ever fountain pen and the rest is basically history. Um, that was a fine, a fine nib. And so then I was like, well, what would a medium nib be like? So I got a medium nib and then I was like, well, Lamy is kind of big too. I wonder how their pens are different from Pilot's pens. I should try those too. And yeah, it just, it's a, a big rabbit hole you never come out of. That's, how, that's why I call my channel Down the Breather Hole. You go down the hole and you, you never come back. Okay, so somebody else said about that question, like what got you into fountain pens? They said, I second this. I would love to hear why you like them and possibly why you think we should give them a try. Like what pen would you suggest to someone who has only used regular boring pens and why? If you're watching my channel, chances are you're already interested in fountain pens. You probably already have some, so I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I still think it's an interesting question to talk about. So I think why you should try them. If you are someone who likes to write, um, whether that be letters or novels or journaling or whatever, fountain pens have the potential to be easier on your hand and wrist because you don't have to push. Now there are, also, there are some ball points and gel pens and different things where you don't really have to push either, so I don't know. But um, your average ball point compared to your average fountain pen, there's less effort required in the writing process for a fountain pen. Um, in my opinion. Also, the thicker, juicier, inkier, more saturated line is just really fun. You know, sometimes I'll pull out a cheap ballpoint. I'm like, oh, this feels great in my hand. I really like this. But then I look down at the page and I'm like, that's hideous. <laughs> um, fountain pen ink just looks so much better on the page. Um, not only that, you have so much to choose from. You know, in the ballpoint world, it's like, well, do you want black or blue or red? maybe green, you know, but then you go into fountain pens and it's like, do you want them to be shimmery inks, sheening inks, shading inks? Which, which of these 758 colors do you want? Like, um, so <laughs> there's just so much more potential and possibility. And also if you're someone who's going to go through ink and go through pens and stuff, I think that fountain pens have the potential to be more sustainable for the environment because you're not constantly using single-use plastic items that you just throw away. You're using things that you can refill over and over and over and over again, potentially for your whole life. So yeah, there's some waste involved, but it's probably gonna be a little less than if you're just burning through ballpoints like crazy. So those are some reasons I can think of that if you haven't tried fountain pens yet, you can find those benefits with fountain pens. And if you do use fountain pens, maybe you can use some of those points to penable your your uh, friends. So um, let's move on to the next question. So what are some ways to enjoy the fountain pen hobby without buying something new? And this is great because as fun as this hobby is, there is a strong temptation to really go off the deep end with consumerism and just keep buying and buying and buying and buying and buying constantly. And um, and for good reason, there's a lot of fun stuff to explore, but, um, and this is actually something I want to talk more about in a future video. Um, I've been thinking about this for quite a while. Like, why do we want to buy so many pens and inks and, and how do we not necessarily stop, but how do we do it responsibly and rationally and all of that kind of stuff. But for now, um, let's focus on the main part of the question. So how do you enjoy the fountain pen hobby without buying something new? And I like this because um, there are a lot of ways to enjoy this hobby without getting something new. Of course, it's fun to um, swatch a new ink, try a new pen, try a new nib grind, whatever. But the thing that I love about this hobby is that it's not just collecting to have something, it's collecting to use something. And so um, if you pivot your focus from the, from the having and the getting to the using, then there are all kinds of ways to enjoy this hobby that don't involve buying something new. You know, the, the simple answer is use pens to do what you enjoy, journaling, writing, drawing, whatever it is. But I've, I've uh, picked up some tips from um, other fountain pen YouTubers that I think are really, really nice. Um, so one thing I've seen going around, I think it's kind of like a mini trend right now with pen YouTubers is to pick one pen and one ink and just exclusively use those for like 
a month-ish or so. And it's really interesting to hear their insights when they're done with that challenge. You know, they thought, well, I, I'm gonna miss my other inks and my other pens, and they really didn't um, very much. They actually just realized how much they enjoyed that one pen and that one ink. So I think that um, one challenge of this hobby is you get so many pens and inks and you just wanna cycle through them all and it can get a little overwhelming. But if you just kind of decide to focus and narrow your focus for a little while, that can help you to enjoy what you already have a little bit more fully. And also I think rotating through your collection. Um, if there's a pen that you really like, it's like your grail pen and you have it finally and you've been using it and you love it, challenge yourself to put it away for a little while uh, and use something different. I've, uh, a while back, I cleaned a bunch of pens and I put away all of my sort of fancy pens, not because I didn't like them, but because I just wanted a break um, so that I could come back to them again fresh and enjoy them in a renewed way. And so some, doing something like that can be helpful. If you have this one go-to pen that you just love, try just letting it sit on the shelf for a week or a month or something, and then come back to it and you'll appreciate it all over again. And then of course, one thing that I really, really, really love about this hobby is that you can have a pen with an ink in it and then you, you'd clean that pen and you put a different ink in it and it's a completely different experience. So. You don't have to buy a new pen to have a new writing experience. You can just switch inks. And I like that idea a lot. And, and that's something that's been very helpful for me. I can take a pen that I've had for a long time. Maybe I'm kind of bored with it. And I put an ink in there that I've never put in there before. And suddenly it feels new. It feels like I'm writing with something new and I'm having a new experience. And that's really fun. Now the last one, um, and this is something that I have learned over time as a writer, as a poet, um, an essayist. You know, buying something is fun that, that tickles a certain part of my brain, you know, you get like a dopamine rush or something from, from buying something, but it doesn't last long. But I found that when I write a new poem and I finish that poem, or at least I get a solid draft of that poem, it almost gives me a similar, it kind of tickles the same part of my brain. It's like, ooh, look, I have something new but that was a way for me to appreciate my pens that I already have, using them to make something new. So instead of um, feeling the itch to get something new by buying stuff, I feel the itch to get something new by making stuff and my, I can use my pens in that process. And so, yeah, every time I, I come up with a poem, I'm like, yeah, this is something new that I, that I made, that I have, and it feels good. So, um, so that's something that, to try. If you've mostly used your pens for work or note-taking or planning, um, try something creative with your pens. Um, pick up a new hobby, drawing, sketching, writing poems, whatever it might be. And that's definitely a way to get a whole lot more enjoyment out of the pens you already have. And on that note, while we're talking about, you know, being creative and stuff, I'll put a few links to some of my poems that have been published online. I'll put them in the description below if you want to check them out. Um, I'll also put a link to my Fiverr account down below. Um, where I, I actually coach writers. Um, I, I offer feedback on poems and short stories and essays and memoir and all that kind of stuff. So no pressure, but if you're interested in um, getting some feedback on your writing, let me know. Um, I'd love to help out. Okay, next question. What do you use your fountain pens for on a regular basis? I've kind of already answered this a little bit. I write poems. I usually um, don't write the finished product with a fountain pen. It's usually me gathering images in a notebook, maybe writing a rough draft in a notebook, and then I take that to the computer and I finish it up there. And it usually takes me months to finish something. It's, it's, a, it's a slow process. You just kind of slowly tweak stuff over time, but the process usually starts with pen and paper. And so I definitely do that. Um, I keep a journal with my wife. We've kept a journal nearly every day we've been married, just a short little paragraph about each day and about each other, that's been really fun. We're now doing the same thing for our kids. We have a journal where we write um, all the cute things that our kids do. Um, so journaling is a big part of how I use my pens and I have a planner and stuff like that. But really I, I see fountain pens as creative tools and that's when I'm most excited about using fountain pens is when I'm making art, um, whether that be poetry or whether I'm dabbling into visual art, which I'm, I'm not, not a not an expert at that at all but still fun to play around with but i just really like making stuff and it's really fun to make my fountain pen hobby a part of that 
Okay, final question. And this question is a little bit different, a little bit odd, but I decided to include it because I think that there are some, some good things I can pull out of this. And I'm gonna read it with, just as is, with the grammar that is there. So, um, is Parker's sonnet, which costs over 150 pounds, worth it? I am thinking of buying one for my brother as a gift. Hence, my sticking to a prestigious brand. And I am struggling a lot before taking the final decision. Or should I stick to 70-ish pounds price range? So, to start off with, I don't know anything about the Parker sonnet. Um, I'm not really a fountain pen scholar who knows everything about every fountain pen. I know the basics about your staple brands and, and pens. Um, but beyond that, I, I really don't know. I don't even know what a Parker sonnet looks like. Um, Parker is a prestigious brand, um, but there are lots of prestigious brands. So to broaden this question and make it more applicable to, to a broader audience, um, you might hear certain things about, you know, Parker being the best brand or Mont Blanc being the best brand or whatever brand it is. But there are just, there are lots of good brands and they're all different. So, um, you get to just kind of explore and take your pick. So you don't have to just stick with the one brand you heard is good. You know, there's, there's plenty of good stuff out there. And again, I'm not the best person to ask questions about a very specific pen, unless it's a pen I've reviewed on my channel and you know that I have that pen. But also I think another thing to pull out of this is like what, what, what pens can you give somebody as a gift? Um, what are good gift pens? So again, like I said, there are lots of good brands with a, a, a big price range. Um, I recommend looking up videos that people have done like top five beginner fountain pens, top 10 next level fountain pens, top 10 beginner gold nib pens, you know, things like that um, to give you an idea of the scope of what's out there. The one thing that I'll add to that though, if you really want to find a really unique and interesting gift for someone who likes pens, look at small companies, small handmade, um, hand-turned pen companies. Those can be really cool, like um, Taylor Pen Company, Carolina Pen Company, Mythic Pens, there, there are so many. There are so many little uh, mom and pop garage kind of businesses that make some really beautiful stuff. And it's stuff that is not mass produced, it's made by hand and um, it can, be, it can be really stunning. Um, and for the price range that this person's talking about, um, you can probably find some nice stuff within that price range. So yeah, so there are some thoughts there. Um, there's a lot to choose from as far as brands, including your little niche, obscure, handmade stuff that can be really fun and really pretty. Okay, so that's it for all the questions. If you have other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Just put them down in the comments below. And don't forget to head over to my Instagram page where you'll see how to enter to win my little pen rest. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.